Welcome to part two of learning the granular and multigranular oscillators within Falcon 2. As I mentioned in part one, many of the parameters contained within the single granular oscillator will be found in the multigranular oscillator, so we don't have to cover nearly as much in this tutorial. Specific to the multigranular oscillator, we have the addition of a voices section and duration variation and reverse controls within our grain section. Now, when we initially load our sample or audio file, this is going to produce the exact same sound as our single oscillator. So playing back at the root note of C3, we can hear our cello played back pretty much unaffected. And we can trigger higher or lower. And this is going to behave similar to the single granular oscillator. And we can again, as we saw in the first part of the tutorial, use the Psi setting to kind of smooth out when we're playing higher or lower pitches. And we also have our grain density, jitter, window settings, etc. all the things that we've seen in part one. But with our voices section, we can actually increase the number of voices being played back from one all the way up to eight. And I'm gonna hold Alt and click to take our size back to as it was. And let's actually move our start marker to closer to the beginning of the beginning of the sample. Now, again, I'm gonna trigger at the root note of C3. Oop, I didn't move that. Okay, there we go. At the root note of C3, this plays back as we expect with one voice. Now, if we were to increase this, say all the way to the maximum of eight, all this is gonna do is make it louder. And that's because each of the additional voices that we've added are gonna be um, added to the same playback position that we can see as our playback cursor moves along the sample. But below the voices parameter, we have a position spread. And as we increase this, this is going to increase the distances at which our new voices will play back. So let's give that a listen. And we're provided with a visual representation of each of the eight voices. Okay, and we can take this all the way up to 10 seconds. Okay, and so when you work with these higher lengths uh, for the position spread, this is gonna be more useful with atmospheric material. Uh, right now we have this uh, cello that has transits in it, so it's gonna sound a little bit weird, but with on audio sample like this, the lower settings for the position spread are actually gonna be a bit better. Now below our position spread, we have time spread. And according to the manual, this will adjust the timing of each voice's trigger. Now I haven't been able to notice a audible difference when I've experimented with this. So if anyone has any insights, please uh, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Now moving over to the grain section, as I mentioned, we have the addition of a reverse button. Now this is going to be different than the reverse that we have available in the contextual menu up above here. So if I use this reverse, notice our sample here, the entire, let's see. Okay. The entire sample is reversed if I trigger this. Okay, let's undo that reverse. Now this is going to be different down here in our parameter control section because this is gonna actually reverse each individual grain. So let's actually take the voices back down to about four. And then let's reverse. Okay, so you can hear that the individual grains are being reversed when we make use of this setting here. Let's go ahead and deactivate that. 
And then next we have duration variation, and this is going to randomize the length of our grains. So let's give that a listen at 0%, no effect. Okay, let's take that all the way up to 100%. Okay, and let's actually take the spread up a little bit, just to make this a little bit more clear. Let's take it up to about one and a half seconds. And back to zero. Okay, it's more consistent when it's down to 0%. So again, the duration variation is going to randomize the length of our individual grains. And this is not to be confused with the jitter because the jitter is going to kind of randomize the playback position of the cursors here. And let's take the position spread down a little bit. And you can actually see this randomization of the playback cursors when we have the jitter up at 100%. can see that random movement in playback. If we take that down to 0%, then we can see that those remain at a static location, moving horizontally across. Okay, so the uh, voices section with these controls and the reverse and duration variation are essentially the main differences between this and the single granular oscillator. And something else to be aware of when you're working with these parameters in the granular oscillators is that we can apply LFOs and macros to each of these. So if we were to take the position spread here, and if we'd like to apply an LFO, we can simply right click on that, come up to add modulation, and let's go to the layer, add it to the layer section, and let's do new LFO. We can see that that pops up here. We're, by default, this is gonna load up a sign type LFO. So uh, let's go ahead and trigger this and just take note of the position spread here. Okay. And so that's moving based on the frequency here. So let's uh, increase that. So we can see the activity here. Now, just above our LFO settings, we have a slider where we can adjust the amount of the effect that we want to be applied to the parameter. So let's lower that down and then re-trigger. And we also have controls for phase, for depth, delay, rise, and smooth. And again, we're going to go into more depth on working with LFOs in Falcon in a future tutorial. But just know that that is available here. And if you'd like to remove any LFOs that you have added, just simply right click on the parameter where you've added it to. And we can clear the modulation. Now, if we come to the info view, we can see that we have no macros set up here. Let's come back to the edit and let's stick with the position spread here. Right click. We can choose to assign a macro, add new macro. And we can see that that pops up here at the program level. We again have a slider for adjusting how much we want this to affect the parameter. So I'm going to lower that just a little bit. And now when we come to our info page, we can see that we have a macro button that we can use to affect that parameter that we've assigned it to. Let's come back to the edit. And down at the bottom, we can see our macro here. And so we can also adjust the value here.
Okay, and if you take note of the position spread here, it's not going all the way to its maximum. And that's because we lowered the slider here. If we were to take that all the way up, then we can make use of the full position spread time. And that's all the way up to 10 seconds. And as with the LFO, if we'd like to remove this, we can simply right click and then delete our macros assignment. We could also come down below here and see our macro one and close that out. If we have a controller that has a mod wheel or pitch wheel and sliders or knobs that we'd like to assign to these parameters, we can also do that. So again, by right clicking on our position spread, we can come to the MIDI learn and I'm going to turn a knob on my controller that is then received. And we can see I now have control of this by using the rotary encoder on my Atom. Okay, and this can really be useful if you're going to work with the position. And let's say we want to take our speed down to zero. So there's not going to be any movement of our playback cursors. Let's set that position to say 37 to start with. Okay, now let's right click and MIDI learn another knob here on my controller. I turn the knob that's been added. And now when I trigger, I can manually use the uh, rotary knob on my controller to move that position. And if we'd like to remove that assignment, we would just right click and MIDI unlearn. And to finish out, I have been using audio samples that have transients in them because I feel like they better display how these parameters are gonna affect the samples that you're working with, but we can bring in any sort of audio sample that we'd like. So if we'd like to work with something that's a bit more atmospheric, um, let's drag that in, stop that automatic playback. And uh, now we have a bit more of an atmospheric sample. Let's take our speed up. Put the loop mode on, forward and backward. Okay, so there's all sorts of things that you can do with these granular oscillators within Falcon. Just experiment with using different audio samples and tweaking the parameters. And then once you spend some time with these, then you'll understand how you can 
uh, shoot towards the sound that you'd like to create and how these adjustments to the different parameters are going to uh, affect your sound. So we will wrap up here and I will see you in the next tutorial.